Hello and welcome back to today's review where we are going to look at the DVA3221 from Synology. But a few things straight off the bat. This is a hardware review. We are going to look, as I say, at the hardware. We have a software overview coming very, very soon where we're going to look at what this can do and maybe put it in its paces to see how it compared against the DVA3219. But if you are coming to this video to see some software about this device, you may come away disappointed. So I appreciate it if you walk out the door now. I hope you don't, but you never know. But this is the brand new 1500 or so quid um, surveillance NAS from Synology. That's without that, and you can shop around a little bit there. And it is the follow-up, the second generation at least, to the DVA3219. It's a GPU graphics card, I might add, powered surveillance system. It takes advantage of an Intel-based processor, DDR4 ECC memory, and takes advantage of AI analytics in its surveillance. What that means in real terms, is if you have a bunch of cameras dotted around your home or business environment, and let's be honest, it's very much the latter, you want to know in real time if some of your customized alerts or if your security um, procedures are being broken. Now, there have been numerous examples that we've provided in other videos and Synology themselves at their own presentations about the benefits of their surveillance system. So, case in point, a number of you who may already be using the Synology surveillance systems will know that there's lots of alerts in there for uh, motion detection, even light, and with more sophisticated cameras, a number of more sophisticated services that rely on the cameras to have that hardware pre-built and they're being supported by the Synology platform. But the majority of those alerts come down to two different versions, really. Number one, they are based on a trigger that you preset and the surveillance system being able to go, whoop, that's been triggered. Now, in the majority of cases, that's going to be someone walks in front of the camera that they shouldn't, um, that uh, a line that's been drawn or an area of uh, concern in a camera field has been moved into. But ultimately, they all break down to simply that in every other surveillance use. Now, the other kind of surveillance utilization from Synology users is one that utilizes the hardware inside this, and that is real-time analytics. That is not only that there is kind of another staff member inside this device that is watching those camera feeds, this AI, that will then report alerts as they happen rather than you scouring through hours, days, weeks, or months of footage. But on top of that, its alerts are far more intelligent than those based on simple motion. For example, AI-powered um, facial recognition, meaning not only can you tell and get recorded footage of people that walk into a field of view, but you can get real-time analysis about them and know if they are part of your organization and therefore no alert is needed or it's a person that doesn't know and therefore alert, alert. On top of that, the knowing the difference between certain objects. So, for example, if you want to know whether outside of your building, whether, well, even though there's people moving around, a car pulls up outside, this will tell you when a car pulls up outside, or a bike, or other kinds of vehicle. It can identify if an item has not left a certain zone for a certain period of time, which is very, very useful, in that rather than having just a camera that goes, oh, someone stood still, this is a camera that it will be able to identify in conjunction with even basic cameras to know that when a person has walked into a field of view, if they don't leave after a while. And that is a very you know, nuanced difference between motion detection. Now, it does go a lot further than simple area of effect control. You can create areas of effect on camera that have different rules. You can decide that certain areas have different areas, uh, different rules and different alerts to different areas and rely on the internals of this system to trigger accordingly. That is why this system exists for AI-powered recognition. There's loads more examples. Uh, that have been issued by both Synology and myself in previous videos. But today's video is mainly about answering two core questions. One, is it any good? And two, is it better than the DVA3219? Because in many regards, this is not an enormous leap over its predecessor. In fact, there's a number of things about it that are near enough identical. And if you've already purchased the DVA3219, should you have gone for this or upgraded? And moreover, 
if you do buy this, are you going to get anything more than getting the old one? Which there's a good chance will start reducing in price, as these things always do. Right now, the price difference between them is about 50 to 100 nikka, so it's a very small difference. But very soon, that price difference will grow. And you're going to be making a choice, maybe watching this video right now, that you've seen the 3219 knocking around at a half decent price, whereas this one, brand new, higher price, is it worth going for it? So, First, let's talk about the hardware inside this bad boy. Now, it arrives with an Intel Atom. Come back, come back. Don't run away. I know I said Intel Atom. All right, come back, sit down, sit down. Yes, it's an Atom. It's a 3538. We've talked about the four quad core. Quad core 2.1 gigahertz CPU inside there. Not GPU embedded, but in this case, it doesn't need to be. Um, it is a CPU that Synology have used for a very long time. And a number of you, I'm sure, if you've not already put it in the comments, will be surprised that this didn't get the benefits of that AMD Ryzen embedded processor, the V1500B, that a couple of the more recent Plus series NASs, the 1821 and the 1621, already got. Now, maybe it's a compatibility problem. Maybe it's just to order the R&D and to get as much out of that GPU with AI processing that Synology have worked on in R&D. They've just not had time to integrate into the Ryzen. We're not sure. But right now, this arriving with the Atom is a bit of a surprise. It still arrives with 8 gig of DDR4 memory and it's ECC memory, Erico correction memory, which when it comes to surveillance footage is probably even more important than anywhere else, to be honest, where you want to make sure that any, you know, integral um, bit and, you know, data problems are identified very early doors and ECC memory having that uh, file self-healing as well, sorry, um, self-healing memory correction. Uh, that's good to know that that is built into it. It goes up to 32 gig of memory across two slots. And again, that's two times 16 slots, all available from Synology, of course. But let's be honest, you want to know about that GPU card. It is the NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1650. Uh, and its predecessor had the GTX 1050 Ti, so it is a jump up. And comparing these graphics cards is actually pretty tough. Because comparing them you know outside of the nas is actually quite straightforward there's loads of guides online loads of websites recommend you check them out but the majority of them are of course focused on gaming gpu cards in the last few years come in two flavors are you going to use it for bitcoin are you going to use it for gaming neither of those go home i know there's a contingent of video editors out there that'll go up me mm, you're not really represented that well in the comparison charts i'm afraid um now the new card does perform higher. Not only has it got um, a higher frequency whilst in operation, um, even though it has the same memory as the predecessor 1080, it does actually have a higher frequency overall whilst being utilized. Now, testing that card in gaming from all of these comparisons that I've read, the newer card just outperforms it by 20-30% on every single modern grade game, which is always good to see in terms of FPS and general utilization, and therefore be able to do more with it. But once you move into the Synology Zone Surveillance Station app, slightly different story because it's very hard to gauge that. But there's not a lot of comparisons out there. And when you have them running simultaneously, there's just so many network bandwidth factors to take into account. It is worth highlighting that um, Synology themselves say that whereas the predecessor could run four simultaneous analytical tasks at once, that means like four constant AI-assisted DVA um actions at once this newer gen with the newer card can support up to six simultaneously but again i'm relying quite heavily on their own reported improvements and not yet my own first-hand experience on this now one thing it does have over a lot of other surveillance devices is it arrives with eight camera licenses where the majority of Synology NASes arrive with two now let's talk about licenses i know this is a real rabbity video at this point but hear me out the majority of Synology NAS devices arrive with the surveillance station software included. You also get two camera licenses and it is arguably the best surveillance software out there, both used with the client apps and in the desktop applications. QVR Pro from QNAP has really closed the gap with the improvements in QVR Pro Elite as well. And, the, and generally the majority of QNAP NASs at the time of recording have more camera licenses as well. So a number of you, and you've bought a Synology NAS that was non-DVA, have kind of gone, ah, oh, brilliant. What do you mean two camera licenses? Why, what? That's a whiz. Well, the reason is, um, Synology themselves do state this, that that software, they will include it for home users to utilize as, um, at two camera licenses at no additional cost. But 
businesses will end up using more cameras. And on top of that, they will end up centering the whole business around it, their security, the staff welfare, you know, insurance and more. And that is a big strain to put on the software development. So because of that, to make sure the software is still dynamic and thriving and improving all the time, Synology took that decision that more enterprise level users will have to pay for additional cameras. And those that are home users, generally they designate two cameras as suitable home utilization. Those two licenses are free. I'm not saying I agree with it. I'm saying that is what they think and ultimately what you know their argument for the camera license systems. And that camera license argument is pretty much across all NAS brands, by the way. That's not just them. Now, with this device arriving with eight camera licenses, that is because this is so surveillance targeted, it's unreal. But it's worth highlighting, you may have noticed by the name, that it isn't an NVR. It doesn't have standalone capability. And we will talk about the GPU card in a bit as well. But it doesn't have HDMI out. It still supports DSM, currently in 6.2, with the DSM 7B uh, released recently. But you can't, it's not just surveillance. It can utilize um, both Disk Station Manager and that wide range of collaboration, virtual machine, backup, and all of those applications all inside. We've also got Surveillance Station. Unfortunately, you can't utilize that GPU card towards non-surveillance utilization, which is a real shame. Because I know a number of you looked at this device in its previous iteration in that 3219 and went, whoa, GPU card, I'm going to hit that on Plex, I'm going to hit that on virtualization. That is great to hear. Unfortunately, once again, you still can't use it in that way. The GPU card is just for DPA utilization, which I know a number of you will be a little bummed out by, particularly towards the end of the video when I show you, once again, the business of that card. But the system, again, arrives with three years of manufacturer's warranty, just like its predecessor, and all of those eight camera licenses are ready to deploy immediately. You can chuck eight cameras on, and given it can support up to six DVA um, um uh, systems at once on those individual feeds as mentioned you do have a lot that you can work with on day one i'm surprised it only arrives with three years of warranty i'd have thought at this price point it was kind of nibbling at the toes of the xs series and possibly could have had a five-year warranty but we shall see um if you do purchase the device you get the retail box big old boring brown box you get the accessories there is the usual power connector a couple of cat 5e cables inside there and again, usual sort of selection of accoutrements included inside. Synology have never really deigned to release their own camera yet. They do rely on a lot of uh, the likes of high-end stuff like Axis. Um, or if you are looking at more budget concern cameras, DVA will allow you to save money on the cameras that you spend on the NAS. You can go for, again, I personally quite like Reolink cameras and Anker cameras. But of course, there's Hick Vision, uh, Edimax, that sort of thing. There are budget ends to this spectrum of cameras. If we have a look at the device... It looks incredibly similar in scale to that of the um, 1618 and 1621. Let's get that thumbnail. There we go. That was easy, wasn't it? Um, inside is this four-bay device. Each one of those SATA bays supports up to an 18 TB SATA hard drive. Um, drive installation is incredibly straightforward. No need for a screwdriver. It does support 2.5-inch and 3.5-inch media. Um, we've already got a drive installed in one of those bays there. It's click and load. Also, it's spring-loaded, and each bay is lockable. This key's inside. Installing a drive is incredibly straightforward. Again, it's install the drive inside. Nice and simple. Slot the drive in. It goes in straight as. Now, a number of you have contacted me in the past about utilising a NAS for surveillance or not, and whether you should buy NAS hard drives like the Seagate iWolf Pro, or you should go for surveillance drives like the Seagate Skyhawk series. The answer is simple. If you are going to be utilizing a NAS for mixed utilization, so that's both surveillance and typical NAS backup streaming, you know, a virtual machine, that kind of use, go for NAS drives. They have a better balance of uh, random read write and, you know, spin up, spin down nice and quick, and that error arguably more erratic behavior than traditional hard drives. But if you're going to be utilizing this almost purely for surveillance, I not only recommend just surveillance hard drives, which are designed for heavy write, light read, so in other words, constantly recording and only rarely being read from because you, that's when you contact the footage. But on top of that, go for AI-assisted drives. Skyhawk AI drives work beautifully well in an AI-equipped system where you need that element, that larger cache base in the background to buffer and assist 
the transmission of that data internally. This doesn't have the NVMe SSD caching bays that we've seen in other systems recently from Synology. If we remove those bays there and have a look inside, you can see that not only do you not have the M2 NVMe caching bays inside, but you can't even see the memory storage bays. They are still built onto the board of this system. The slots are inside, a couple of sodiums as well. Now, if we have a look, that front there, we've got uh, LEDs there for system activity, network activity, and system status. We've got a USB 3 port there on the base too. Um, if we look at the rear of this device and turn it around, we can have a look at the ports and connections. And the first thing that may strike you immediately is that big old rear fan there. Lots of cooling. We have that vent right there for the GPU card, and that's to help um, air pass all over the device. It's a metal chassis with vents on the side there and the Synology logo uh, to prohibit dust as well, build up. We've got USB 3 ports there on the base for connecting external storage devices. There's not a lot of USB connected peripherals, so they're pretty much predominantly for UPS notifications, for um, adding additional storage. There's a few network adapters, but not many, and the list is getting smaller every day. Um, one GB on this box is actually a little bit more justified, in my opinion, than the majority of devices. Uh, a lot of the surveillance devices they arrive with uh, 1GB as standard because the cameras just aren't able to take advantage of larger density in terms of throughput. But I would argue maybe it would have been time to look at greater network connectivity on this if you are utilizing an enormous number of camera in, cameras in your environment. Say you've got those eight cameras and you've got them running at 20 frames per second 1080p feeding to this device at once. You're going to have to utilize link aggregation and a connected switch in order to maintain that through putting that bandwidth um, to have all those cameras recording to this device. So I do think this device could have seen a greater network connection there on the rear. It is expandable with more storage. There's four by default and a multitude of different RAID configurations. But on top of that, you've got those two ESATA connections to attach up to 10 drives via two DX517 expansion chassis. But let's be honest, the real interest factor is that GPU there on the side. Now, there is a comms port, so don't think that is VGA. It isn't. That port there is pure network maintenance port. You're not going to be able to connect this to some old TFT monitor. Why would you do that anyway? It's madness. But the real bummer for a number of us is the idea that this does not take advantage of HDMI out. You've got those USB ports there. You've got a graphics card inside. It would have been great if this system would have allowed us to create a standalone surveillance system. Let's be honest, it's not the first time Synology have done that. The VS series, the NVR series, these are Synology NASes designed for surveillance that utilize surveillance station, all of the apps, the client devices, and a KVM keyboard video mouse setup to have a standalone surveillance point that is still network and internet accessible. I'm still surprised they didn't allow this to be possible on this device. The reason being that if we remove the lid, and I've already removed all the screws internally and externally, if we remove that metal lid and we have a look inside, and I've already removed the screws around this, if we have a look at that GPU card and slide it out of there, you will see we do that there because we don't want to touch the PCIe, that this card has the DVI and the HDMI out on that card. It has been an, clearly a choice by Synology, maybe for reasons of R&D, maybe for ones of knowing that people aren't, you know, people will play with it if they can get to it, but they've clearly made a choice to not allow users to be able to utilize the HDMI out and DVI. Now, in the previous generation, this was exactly the same with that 1050Ti card. But when we tried to connect a monitor to the chassis, when we removed the rear panel so we could get an HDMI into that tight little spot, nothing came out of that HDMI apart from a little bit of white text and nothing notable. Check out that video uh, from um, early last year, I believe. So again, it is a shame that they're not allowing you to utilize standalone connectivity on that card because I think that would make this device mwah, Perfect. I think it would definitely justify that price tag. And also, having that ability to create a KVM setup on that surveillance whilst DV, uh, DSM is running in the background. You don't necessarily need to be able to access DSM in a KVM setup. But if you could run surveillance station on this device to port out from that card over HDMI dedicated, then you could have had your standalone system and 
DSM running via the network and the internet to all of your connected users to run your business around. But I'm being idealistic, that's clearly not something that's available here. This still is a fantastic NAS device and a great step forward from Synology and an investment in their surveillance platform. But with that lack of HDMI out and KVM support, that's always gonna be a bit of pill for me. And if that's something you guys are looking for, that may disappoint you. It doesn't prevent it happening. You can easily install the client applications on a connected PC or Mac system and then use those client apps connected via the network or the internet to create a separate standalone system anyway. But you're still very much reliant on the network in order to do that. So again, pros and cons, pros and cons. I like this device. I think it is a great move from them, but We'll have to wait and see if a newer version comes down the line. If they evolve this technology even further, and then maybe one day we'll get to use some of those little ports. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Do go to the links in the description to learn more about this product, the hardware review, and of course, visit the guys at span.com. If you did enjoy it, click like. If you want to learn more, click subscribe, and I will see you next time.